Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sal Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we we'll make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so I don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with the male reproductive system. Okay, just very quick functional anatomy. Functional anatomy of the male reproductive system. So everything about the male reproductive system mainly centered around this thing here, the testis. Okay, the testis. So we're going to be looking deeper into the testis, a closer look into the testis. Now, the testis is made up of about 900 tubules. Okay, about 80%, 80% of the testis is made up of what is known as seminiferous tubules. About 900 convoluted, they are convoluted, they are coiled. Okay, 900 seminiferous tubules. Okay, so these seminiferous tubules, we have two main cell types there. Okay, one of them is this large cell. It's known as sustentacular cells, popularly known as Sertoli cells, all right? So one of them here, we have Sertoli cell, Sertoli cells. Then around here, you now have the gem cells, okay? Or spermatogonium, all right? So from those gem cells, the sperms, are produced all right so you have the gem cells there gem cells so apart from that we said 80 percent is made up of seminiferous tubules so the remaining 20 percent is made up of another a third cell type so that third cell type is known as the ledic cells the ledic Ledic cells. Right, so now these are the Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells. Okay, and these are the Ledic cells. Ledic cells, and these are the gem cells here. So now let's go into their functions. Very, very important. Very important. Now, the Sertoli cells, which are also known as sustentacular cells, sustentacular, they have very, very important functions in the testes. And one of them is that they provide support for the developing germ cells. You see, this germ cells, this is tubule, this is the lumen, all right? Everything here is a seminiferous tubule. All right, so these gem cells, they are arranged in layers according to the developmental stages. Remember, we talked about the developmental stages from the primordial gem cell, the primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, and so on, then the spermatid. So they are arranged like that until they reach this point where they become spermatids and they are transformed through spermogenesis into mature cells so they provide support for the developing gem cells that's Sertoli cells another very important function of the Sertoli cell is that they form what is known as tight junctions tight junctions okay so they form tight junction so what's important of this tight junction this tight junction it forms what is popularly known as the blood testis barrier okay the blood testis barrier in other words there should not be any substance from the blood entering into the testis that can be toxic 
some toxic substances located in the blood, they should not find their way into the test. It's going to cause a lot of problems. Okay, so that is what a tight junction is there for, to prevent that communication. So it's like a sanctuary, called a sanctuary site, prevents that direct communication. Okay, then secondly, another part of it is that it prevents the germ cells from entering into the blood because the germ cells, they are antigenic. Okay, so they can provoke immune response and the immune system go and kill them so it prevents that communication from allowing these germ cells from entering into the blood and provoking immune response so very important they form tight junctions leading to what is known as the blood testis barrier the blood testis barrier okay the third function of the Sertoli cells is that the Sertoli cells, they secrete what is known as androgen binding proteins. ABP for short. So what's the function of the androgen binding proteins? Androgens. Androgen, you're talking of testosterone actually. Okay, so the testosterone secreted from these Leydig cells, okay, in order to make the levels of testosterone high in these seminiferous tubules because it provokes the spermatogenesis. Testosterone is what provokes and stimulates spermatogenesis. So by binding androgens, secreting this ABP, androgen binding protein, it keeps the local levels of testosterone high. You understand that? It's very easy. Androgen binding protein. So these are the major things there. It also secretes a flu that helps the transport. Okay, because after being produced in the semiferous tubules, they will need to be transported. All right? So that's basically the function of the cell. So it's a very important cell types. This one's here. Okay? So the germ cells, we already talked about it. They produce sperm spermatogenesis that's their function spermatogenesis okay then the third cell type which i've already mentioned the ledic cells their function basically is to secrete testosterone testosterone okay that's their major function and you know without testosterone you can't have any male reproductive function spermatogenesis is controlled by testosterone all the male secondary sexual characteristics that you see okay we discussed all of that in puberty they are brought about by testosterone so what happens is that these ledic cells now they are influenced by the pituitary hormones okay the gonadotrophins FSH and LH. FSH, and you have LH. For you to easily remember then is that FSH, S here, stimulates the Sertoli cells. Okay? It influences the Sertoli cells, the function of the Sertoli cells. Then LH, L here, it influences the Leydig cells to secrete testosterone, all right? So this influences the Leydig cells, all right? The luteinizing hormone is for the Leydig cells. The follicle stimulating hormone is for the Sertoli cells. It influences the Sertoli cells to provide nutrients, secrete androgen binding proteins, and all the functions you see about the Sertoli cells, all right? So that is basically what you need to know about that so from now the sperm cells are now mature enough to now be moved away from the seminiferous tubule so that takes us to the second part now we are done with what happens in this testis now we're going to be seeing the different parts of the internal genital tract of the male so we're going to be learning about that after this break
all right you're welcome back so now we've dealt with the testes the structures inside the seminiferous tubules and all of that so now let's move out of the testes so from the seminiferous tubules so many of them you have so many seminiferous tubules coming together coalescing together to form what is known as rete testes okay so those rete testes also join together to form the vas efferens the vas efferens that now lead to the epididymis okay so the epididymis is this prominent structure here located here epididymis okay the plural is epididymites you add des all right so the epididymis is where we are going to start our talk from because of its very important function it stores sperm okay its major function there it's storage all right epididymis okay majorly storage and also some form of maturation of the sperm takes place there and what is that that is where a lot of mitochondria is added is produced okay so it develops its motility function a lot of that is developed at this epididymis the tail grows longer more mitochondria is added to the middle piece to power the tail the whip like movement all right so that's what happens some form of maturation at the epididymis now the next thing you have from the epididymis you now see a tubule they come together and form another tubule which is known as the vas deferens also known as Doctus difference. So number two, Doctus difference. So of course, is to conduct the sperm from the epididymis along the tract to meet other structures that will add volume to the sperm. Okay, to now convert it to semen. Right. So it's very important that you know that there's a difference between semen and sperm okay so as the, it travels a lot of fluid and substances are added to it so now the next port of call you have this structure here known as the seminal vesicles seminal vesicles so the seminal vesicles they constitute 60 percent of the volume of semen which is about two thirds okay two thirds then after the seminal vesicles then joins with before it enters this structure here is known as the prostate the prostate gland so the vast difference is going to go and join there so from the dots from the seminal vesicles joining with the vast difference constitute what is known as the ejaculatory duct all right that now goes through the prostate gland and prostatic fluid is also secreted into what you already have okay this is the bladder this is the prostate just under the bladder sitting under the bladder so in males as males age sometimes the prostate gland can enlarge enlarge so much that it begins to compress on the urethra because it's going to join with the urethra from the bladder it's the same urethra for urination that's also used for ejecting semen okay so as it joins with the urethra coming from the bladder it passes through the prostate gland and when the prostate gland enlarges too much can compress it okay so that's very important to note in prostatic hyperplasia they call it benign prostate hyperplasia 
all right so the prostate gland adds prostatic fluid prostate gland adds prostatic fluid to it and then just not shown here but around here you have small glands known as the bulbourethral glands number five they have another interesting name known as the cowpas gland cowpa cowpas gland so that's this cowpas gland what do they secrete they secrete a very clear slimy fluid okay which is popularly known as pre-ejaculatory fluid so the function is to help clear the urethra of residual urine that is acidic okay because the semen is alkaline the ph of the semen is alkaline in order to resist the acidity from the, both the urethra and also the female genital tract the female genital tract is acidic so that it can make the environment unconducive for bacteria so to resist the acidity of the female genital tract the secretions okay from this mirror they are alkaline all right so this seminar vesicle making 60 percent provides a lot of fructose forgot to mention that fructose that gives it nutrition and it makes atp from there that helps to power the sperm now the bobo urethra grant secrets that if you notice when men they are aroused for a long time you see some fluid being secreted that is from the bobo urethra gland the calpas gland it's clear colorless slimy fluid okay before you get to ejaculation to inject the semen that pre-ejaculatory fluid is from the bobo urethra glands okay so it now goes the urethra and it comes out from the penis so around all these places here surrounding the penis you have erectile tissue erectile tissue okay so erectile tissue that helps for erection during arousal we're going to deal with the male sexual act and the stages before it leads to ejaculation right so very important to note so i'm going to deal with that so this is what you need to know about the functional anatomy of the male genital tract reproductive system so next we're going to be dealing with the male sexual act all right so see you in the next video